So come, let us pray across the screen. Dear God, you have great plans for us and we believe in you for it all. You have shown us the beauty in trusting you, so remind us once again as we come around your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone across the screen said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Beautiful. So, we have been going on a series called God's Plan for Your Life. And yesterday we talked about the unwritten rules of plans. Plan to start over, plan to say no, and plan to be creative. Well, today we are going to talk about this topic called not being able to see God's plan. Yes, you got that right. Not being able to see God's plan. So what happens when we don't or can't see God's plan? Well, let's go to the Bible, shall we? That's the best place to even begin. In the Old Testament, Jeremiah was a prophet delivering a message from God to his people who had been exiled or kicked out to Jerusalem kicked out of Jerusalem to a place called Babylon. This certainly isn't where they wanted to be. It wasn't the plan. Instead, God is rescuing them. Instead of God rescuing them right away, he tells them in Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 5 to 7. I'm going to read it for you. It says this, Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons. Give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. What God is essentially asking of them is to start a life to plan. Start a life, plan to stay and even to work for the peace of the city where I sent you into exile. How weird is it that God is asking them to live their life in a place where they have been exiled? That's so not the plan. And if that wasn't weird enough or bad enough, a few verses later in Jeremiah 29 verse 10, God says, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place, which is Jerusalem. In other words, God is telling them to trust him to fulfill his promise and that he will restore and lead them back to Jerusalem. But they will have to be in Babylon for 70 years. 70 years. Imagine that. Most of us aren't even patient for 70 seconds. And imagine 70 years. And then the next verse that most that all of us most likely would have heard before comes up. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Right? You know this. For I know... The plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. But if you are like me, who never knew the origin of how this famous verse comes about, this for I know the plans I have for you, we would have thought that the story came from joy and blessing. But rather it was a story of trust and waiting. You see, we all have hard times. We, we all have had times where God's plans aren't just what we imagine it would be. Plans that leave you saying words like, seriously, what? And let me share with you a personal story. But before I carry on, I just want to tell you that I love the local church, which right now is WMCKL, which I'm in. The local church is the beacon hub of salvation for its community and it is beautiful. Through amazing appointed leadership, this church and this world belongs to God and it will continue to shine and grow until the end. So before I got this uh, full-time job here at church, I was given an opportunity to do an internship for one year. That doesn't sound that bad, but actually it was unheard of. I just came back from Bible college, graduated with an advanced diploma, with already done three years internship, and now I have to intern again with an intern pay, intern benefits. And I was like, wait a minute, that's not fair. And one year was a long time for an intern before I am decided to be a permanent staff. It was frustrating and I had my moments of uh, leaving and questions to God. But now looking back in hindsight, with the position and job I have now, I see how foolish I was to act that way. Because no matter how skillful, let me tell you, no matter how skillful or gifted you think you are, you never stop learning, you never stop growing, and you never stop being better. And that whole year, God was actually giving me time to trust, time to reflect, and time to seek Him, to grow relationship with Him and with each other, with the people in the church, towards what His plans was for me in the church, in this country, and in this world. 
And I'm here today doing what I love because God fulfills his promises. And I believe, and I believe in a God who takes his time to lead his children, you and me, into plans that prosper them, not to harm them, but to give them a future and a hope. So for all of us who just joined in, here are three things about God's plan you should know that I had to learn as well. Are you ready? Number one, good plans do take time. God told the Israelites they would be in captivity for 70 years. A lot of people never get to see the other side of the promises of God because they want their futures now, right? So they start to divert and then they find themselves lost. But I believe that sometimes it might feel like it's taking forever for God to reveal His plans for you. But in reality, let me tell you, but in reality, you may never see, you may never see the full outcome of what God has for you because you could be actually living it right now. So, stay the path. Continue trusting the process. Read your Bible, pray regularly, and stay in community because good plans do take time. All right, number two. Everyone say number two. Waiting seasons are not wasted seasons. Let me say that again. Waiting seasons are not wasted seasons. Notice that God didn't tell the Israelites to just wait and do nothing for 70 years. No, He told them to work for the peace and prosperity of the city that He sent them to. Wherever you are right now, God can use you. In my one year of the internship, I thought that I was going to be really useless and just cruise by with what I know and what I already am good at. But God used me, trained me, showed me in so many ways how much I am still impactful even in the waiting. Even in your time of high school or some of you in college or finding your career path, don't miss out on making an impact for the kingdom now. Even when God hasn't placed you, He can still use you. And lastly, His plans are good. Whatever season you find yourself in right now, the promises of Jeremiah 29 verse 11 holds true. God does have good plans for you. Plans for a future and a hope. It may not seem like everything is working out right now, but if you continue to trust God with your future, you'll see good on the other side of it. Surround yourself with stories and testimonies of friends and people who are living witnesses to the goodness of God in their lives. Young people and everyone joining us across the screen, whatever season you are in right now, God's plans are good and there's no time like the now. Take this time, use this time to grow yourself and to trust God in what He wants to do in your life. So with that in mind, we're going to end this with a prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we know the plans you have for us are good and your promises are true because you keep to every word you say. In this season of discovering and waiting for your plans in our lives, help us to trust you daily as we sing, we dance, we pray, we read your word and love people until we see your promises come to pass in our lives. We praise you, we thank you for you in our lives today and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone across the screen said, Amen. Amen and Amen. So, remember, good plans do take time. Waiting time is not wasted time. And God still has good plans for you. His plans are amazing. So with that in mind, wherever you are, I pray that you have a great day. I pray that your college or whatever you're doing right now, that you'll be able to continue to trust God in seeing His great plans for you.